let us start the open question and answer session. So, this is uh, Bhagwan Parashuram Institute, Institute of Technology. Question is that can we have similar contents in all semesters, in all subjects, in all technical institutions? Uh, if we have like this, then will it be possible? Uh, beneficial for uh, student community. If you are asking whether uh, it is possible to do educational technology courses for all subjects, then sorry, we cannot. Uh, in a branch, in a particular subject, uh, contents of uh, courses in all semesters in different different universities can be similar or if they can be similar then I think it will be beneficial. So, that is really out of scope for this particular workshop. What we can do in this workshop is for your course and at most your department or institute you can work out some plan amongst your own institute. Selvam College of Technology. My question is how to form the concept mapping for a derivating and a problematic paper man? So, the technique is the same as for any other topic. Uh, like I mentioned yesterday, ideas like concept maps or learning objectives in various Bloom's levels, a lot of people have tried to create examples in various topics. So, if you are looking for concept maps for a specific topic, you can actually go to Google and see if somebody has done it. But the technique is very similar. You identify small concepts and try to relate them using cross links. SIES Graduate School of Technology. Yeah, uh, good evening. Um, uh, the question that we have uh, is, uh, you know, these activities that we do, the peer uh, instruction activities, uh, have they been tested in large classroom of say around 75, 80, uh, where you know uh, the discipline of the students could be an issue and uh, particularly when say even a teacher may be inexperienced, yeah. uh, uh, this is one. And uh, second is, uh, I have be, uh, say if I have, I have made a learning objective and um, I have a, um, a question that is specifically at the apply level. So, if I say in, in my exam or in the assignment, uh, I, have, I have given a question of the understand level, uh, is my question still aligned with it uh, and vice versa? Okay, what uh, do you that think? That is the question is at a second? higher level. I mean the okay. Uh, all right, let me take your first question first because that is actually quite interesting and it has a lot of, uh, there is a lot of information. So, in fact, it turns out that peer instruction is one of the techniques that has a very large body of experimental research and studies done on it. Uh, large is not restricted to 70 or 80. There have been results from classes as large as 3 and 400. And peer instruction has been implemented pretty successfully in terms of student learning of uh, stu deeper student uh, conceptual understanding and then uh, definitely student motivation. In very large classes, if you have some technological support like actual clickers, it might be useful because it is much easier for a teacher in a class of 400 to see the responses electronically than by a show of hands or so. But in classes of 70 or 80, show of hands is perfectly fine. And the other thing that can be done to manage is uh, something that was shown in the lab, but I will just show it again. Take a piece of paper and simply divide it into four qu uh, quadrants, right, A, B, C and D and students can hold up their answers like this or like this. This can be done in very large classes also and it is fairly easy to get a distribution in uh, terms of what different students ha have answers to. Students do respond, uh, again as mentioned yesterday, the first two or three times when you do it, they also may not be clear as to what is to be done. So, you may have, there is a small learning curve at the beginning, same for teachers. But I think after say three sessions or so, these uh, activities, uh, it is fairly, uh, it, they become routine for both the student and the teacher. So, for discipline, again, it is up to the teacher, in fact, to create the conditions in the classroom, teachers and the peers, to create a rapport and to get student buy-in. And in the beginning as a teacher, you have to make some effort to get student buy-in by explaining why you are doing this, what might be the benefits to students. And if a few students actually do have buy-in, use their help and uh, seeing their peers 
interact enthusiastically is one of the uh, that is a good motivator for other students also. Uh, your other questions about learning objectives that apply and understand. So, strictly speaking apply and understand are not the same and we would not call it alignment, but so yeah an apply level question with for an understand or an apply level uh, objective and an understand level exam question would not be aligned completely. But if your question happens to fall on the border like some examples we saw yesterday then you might be able to make a case for alignment. And the purpose of alignment again is to see if your objective is achieved the way you write it. It is not alignment for alignment's sake. We will do an entire session tomorrow on writing assessment questions, actual exam questions and uh, project questions uh, on different levels inside uh, the different levels of Bloom's taxonomy. And we will also look at possible methods of evaluating some of the higher order questions. So, uh, tomorrow morning is devoted to this topic. Let us see Sri Buddha College of Engineering. Madam, is there any difference between course objectives and course outcomes? So, can you please give me one example for both? Okay, is there a difference between course objective and course outcome? We took this question multiple times yesterday. So, I am only going to briefly repeat the answer. We, we addressed this question many times yesterday. There may be some subtle differences in the definition. So, if you have a strict definition from AICTE or from some governing body that says this is what is meant by an objective and this is what is meant by an outcome, please do follow it. But for our purposes here, we do not make any serious distinction between them because the purpose of both is very similar. It is to determine or to identify what is the performance outcome of the learner. It is to identify what can be measured when learners do something. Jawaharlal Nehru National College, please go ahead. Uh, Ma'am, actually, I strongly believe the human work can't be replaced by uh, the machines. Uh, you uh, actually you talked towards video and animation, uh, animation oriented uh, teaching method. So, at what extent this kind of video lecture series is useful for uh, knowledge sharing and uh, uh, and uh, distributing and knowledge sharing with the students? And because uh, we we can't uh, we can't follow up all the things uh, in video video lecture series. Because some of the important portion may be skipped at the time of explaining the video series. Uh, uh, then how can how can we uh, it is useful? How can we the video lecturing is useful for uh, uh, advanced teaching methods method now? Okay, so uh, once again the answer to this is that there is an entire session on flipped classroom tomorrow where we will be taking up this question of can everything be converted into a set of video lectures? The short answer is that no, everything cannot be done. There is a lot of things that there are only few things that you can outsource to the video which the students can do out of class and there is a lot of things that you have to do in class after the students have watched the video. What those things are we will see tomorrow. IES college please go ahead. Ma'am I have a question for visualization we are having three tools like video simulation and third one animation which method is better for visualization. Okay, this question was actually answered in the session in the afternoon on visualization and the answer to this question is that it is not a meaningful question at all. One and again yesterday similar questions came which is the best teaching method which is better A or B. Such questions are not at all meaningful because they would not help you find a suitable method for a particular goal. Short answer to your question is it depends on the purpose. There is no other answer that to which is the best method. Sri Sh Shankaracharya Institute, please go ahead. Ma'am, uh, GPS activity for faculty member is very good, but if we implement for the students in the classroom, it is very much difficult to complete the syllabus in between the given time frame. So, can we implement TPS for specific uh, some unit or some topic only? Okay. So, the question is that TPS activities take a lot of time and is it possible to complete the syllabus in the given amount of time? I think I have paraphrased that question appropriately. So, the point again here is that it is not necessary to do every technique for every topic. 
so one once in a while so for, for example in one class if you are doing tps or maybe even in alternate classes you are doing one tps activity that is a good enough frequency of the tps activity so the choice of matching the purpose of the activity with your learning objective that is the important thing like even in the case of the previous question for the visualization which visualization rather than that match the purpose with the learning objective so for a particular topic tps may be useful then use tps only for that topic so you will find that it's possible to cover the syllabus in fact a lot of uh, topics the students will discover on their own through this mechanism so only when you start implementing them you will start getting confidence in the techniques that all these uh, issues of class control and issues of syllabus coverage these are the two common concerns that any instructor has when they move from traditional lecturing to using some active learning technique so you will find that both of these things in your own class you will be able to see that they are being taken care of yeah. uh, i want to take a, th this common issue before we go to the next question on completion of syllabus and we did discuss this to some extent earlier uh, there are a few more points i'd like to make to continue this answer and the main concern is how can i do all these strategies i like active learning i want to do all of these but i can't complete my syllabus so as was just mentioned you don't have to do in fact you should not do all these activities at the same time you should pick and choose the one for the purpose at the same time you can you'll find that if you use active learning one of these active learning strategies for example think pair share to discuss a particular concept you may not need to spend 20 minutes giving a lecture on the same concept so don't think of these activities as something over and above what you have to do in terms of giving a large lecture but you can start off you can start off your class with a peer instruction question and the discussion phase of the peer instruction can be the instruction for that topic and then move on to the next topic if you feel that students have understood it so this is one way you can use to insert these techniques within your lecture bilai institute of technology a uh, good evening madam good evening there's a question like uh, we have written the course in uh, um, uh, objectives and then we have also written the concept uh, we have done the concept map etc uh, but how can we validate that it is right what is the validity is there any such validity for knowing that what we have done is right yeah hmm? yeah so uh, correctness or the validity of the concept map i mean there is no there's no i don't have a clear answer for that what you should do instead is see if that concept map helps you achieve your purposes in the sense it's a tool for yourself if you are creating a course a concept map for your own course it's the it's a uh, basis for which you'll design your entire course so it's an alternate representation there are ways to assess concept maps that students have made for a particular topic but that's not the same as evaluating the validity of your own um, concept map and also different instructors may have different concept maps for a similar course that's perfectly acceptable here it's more a matter of fit for your goals and your constraints rather than validity magdam college of engineering hello uh, madam so how much extent the tps activity is applicable for mathematical subjects or analytical subjects like electromagnetic engineering and other that is network analysis etc okay okay uh, the question is to what extent is tps strategy applicable to sub mathematical subjects like electromagnetic theory or uh, similar subjects and they are very applicable the challenge is to find a question for which the tps activity again works well so tps activity works well when you have questions that can take multiple possible solutions or when you want different groups of students to do pros cons of a particular method or one method against another it's also a good technique when you want to do problem solving so let's say there is a very complex problem instead of giving the entire complex problem for the student to solve 
If you break it down as a simple think phase and a slightly more challenging pair phase where they talk to each other and then a more challenging share phase for the same problem, students will be able to solve the problem. They won't be daunted by the complexity of the problem. So TPS in fact is quite relevant to the kind of subjects that you mentioned. Rangasamy College, please go ahead. Good evening, madam. Is there any difference in uh, using the concept mapping in course planning and framing a syllabus for a particular course? So uh, my answer to that is that concept mapping is part of framing a syllabus. It's really part of the same activity, same purpose and they are different. You may think of those as different representations which have different advantages. It's all part of the same activity. Center 1247, please go ahead. Hello, ma'am. Being a teacher, how we can ensure that all the students sitting in the class are truly engaged in TPS activity? Because it might happen that most of them are not having an interest in the topic and they are simply sitting and chatting with each other. What would be the remedy for it? Over to you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. The question is, how do we ensure that all students are engaged in the TPS activity? And the first answer is, you can't ensure that all students are engaged. So if that sounds a little disappointing, the, the good part is what we can do is some strategies to try to get more students engaged. In none of these activities can you get a magic formula where all students can be engaged. So specifically for TPS, a couple of things you can do in your class is one is when the students are working on the especially on the pair phase or on the uh, in the pair phase or the think phase, you can walk around and give students some feedback. So some instructors do this, walk between the students, look at what they're writing, hear what they're saying in small groups and interact with them for, you have two minutes where they're doing the activity. The other suggestion you can do is to give them worksheets which they fill one per group and you can collect the worksheets at the end of the activity. The fact that the students are required to submit a worksheet, sometimes that helps them uh, be more motivated. Tyagarajar College, please go ahead. Hello. Uh, my question is, uh, how to include the questions at the higher order Bloom's level like analyze, evaluate, create in the conventional or the traditional exam pattern? If it is not possible or it should be addressed only in other forms like assignment, tutorial or mini projects. Okay. So uh, we will talk in more detail about some high examples of higher order questions in tomorrow's sessions. And the suggestion you make in fact is a very good suggestion that assignments and projects in fact are valuable uh, opportunities for us to give students higher order questions. Having said that, there are some questions, especially at the analyze or evaluate level where you may be able to form an exam question, but the, you'll have to work within the constraints of the timing for the exam and what are the other questions in the exam and so on. So it is possible to do it. You can't do a lot of it, however, in the exam, in which case you have to use the uh, projects and other modes. So some examples of such questions we'll show tomorrow. Yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, I'm really having uh, one uh, doubt regarding mapping. Uh, we uh, we would implement the real-time models to explain the working principle of the model we want to include. Similarly, we want to uh, give the training for the students through field visit. Uh, like uh, we are belongs to electrical means, we want to inbuilt with the transformers, uh, transmission lines, and other parameters built uh, with the uh, field visit also we want to arrange in, include the uh, syllabus. So it will, will, it will give more uh, effective for the students, those who are poor in the studies also, uh, they want to improve the studies. Here I want to mention the model based training, we include the practical work and understanding the concept wise. Uh, one more thing, practical oriented uh, uh, teaching. These are things, uh, it, will, it will help to improve the students uh, technical knowledge. Okay, so thank you for your comment and the comment is that there are strategies like field visits, etc., which are in fact very beneficial to students and definitely so. Uh, you mentioned something about concept mapping in the beginning and the point here is that the concept mapping only guide you into 
what topics and what concepts you should address. It does not say how, it says what and perhaps also at what level. The how comes in terms of the strategies where you make these decisions whether you want to do active learning in class or a field visit and so on. Regional Center, Anna University, please go ahead. Very good evening. Suppose a course contain uh, different uh, irrelevant content, how linked with uh, those content through concept map? Okay. So again as I said the concept map is really a tool in your hands that helps you decide how you want to connect the various parts of the course. Possibly there are some threads in the course, some sections which are not linked to others, but that is your choice whether you want to include them or not. The concept map is only a tool, it is a tool that represents various topics and various learning objectives. Uh, good afternoon, I had a question or uh, rather a comment to make on the pair phase of think, pair and share thing. I know we have been discussing this quite a lot, but uh, generally the pair part of the think, pair or uh, share thing becomes very noisy and managements do not like such classes and read instructor for it. So, what do we do in such a situation? Okay, so this is again an external constraint which some universities face that in the pair phase or in the share phase or in the discuss part of peer instruction strategy, the class gets very noisy. And from an educator's perspective, this is very good noise because this is where the actual learning is happening between the students. They are learning from each other, from their peers and that learning is much more personal and much more effective than a teacher broadcasting to the entire class. So, what can you do as a teacher? I think firstly you have to try to talk and see if you can convince your management and it is much better for you if you have other colleagues who are also trying it. If you say that IIT Bombay encouraged doing this because there is a lot of research that this noise is good and this is how our students learn, see if there is somebody who will listen. And, yeah. You can also take the help of the students themselves. Yeah. So, you can have the students, for example, in many course evaluations, the students themselves will write that because of this technique, they found that they were engaged, they were not sleeping in the class and their learning has increased and all. So, you can take that feedback from the students and put it in front of the management. That is what we do in order to convince our management to implement any new techniques. Truba College of Engineering. Good evening, ma'am. And my question is for delivering the lecture on mathematics, which visualization tool is better? Uh, is it a video, animation, or a, a simulation? Okay, the question is similar to what we saw earlier that for topics in mathematics, which is better, video, animation, or simulation? Now, the thing is, the, you have to ask the question at a much more detailed and finer level. All three ca can be good or neither can be good depending on the purpose for which you have to use the visualization. For example, do you want to show some geometrical transformation or do you want to try to demonstrate a proof of something. So, it really depends on your very specific objective. Again to any of you who are thinking which is a good strategy or which is a good technology tool, first write down the purpose and the learning objective that you wish to achieve and then see which tool or which strategy fits for that purpose. Mar Basilios College, please go ahead. Good evening. Yeah. Ma'am, uh, do you think that the effectiveness of these ICT based teaching methodologies will vary uh, based on the quality of students in the class? Yeah. So, uh, the way you implement the strategy the way you actually, uh, which strategy you choose and the way you implement it should be informed by the audience. So, who your learners are does form one piece into your decisions. If this choice is made in a, in an aligned manner, then you will, you should get uh, some effective results. Some techniques are known to be more beneficial for certain types of learners more than others that people have found results of that nature. They also depend upon the quality of the instructor. 
So, uh, for example, uh, you might find many resources on the web talking about flip classroom, which is basically just capturing a video. Capturing a video is not just a flip classroom. So, there the quality of the instructor, how much the instructor brings to the classroom is as important in order for the technique to be successful. So, some of this we will see again tomorrow afternoon. Okay, so with that uh, I think we should end this session. If you have other questions, please post them on Moodle or on chat.